I think one of the biggest, 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 biggest mistakes that students make on this journey is thinking that activities will make up for poor grades. Ask Dr. Gray pre-med Q&A brought to you by Blueprint MCAT. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I am wonderful. What can I help you with? Sure. So I am a non-traditional pre-med student, I guess you could call me. I've been out of college since 2021. Um, but I I do have a pretty um, <laughs> interesting trend of my GPA okay. that because um, I didn't go into college thinking I wanted to be pre-med. So I was already like a little behind when I started taking my pre-med classes. And um I guess the whole reason why I went into pre-med also kind of took a toll on me grade-wise and academic-wise. So it wasn't until, honestly, COVID that I was able to really get my act together, which I know for a lot of people was a time that was kind of the opposite. So, um, but yeah, I, um, I'm i actually too doing a, a SMP after I graduate, but I'm worried that because of my uh, science GPA and just the amount of credits I have that even taking more classes undergrad or even this SMP won't really help me in my applications and will get me screened out. So I kind of just wanted to hear some extra advice since I know you talk a lot about upward trends. Yeah. Um, and as you see, I don't know if we're doing the, the mapped uh, showing of my trend, but I have mapped and the trend is <laughs> it's a lot of up and down so uh, maybe we could look at that up, yeah, up and down funny. and all around uh yeah i mean i can i can pull up your map to count here for the most part you were a 3.0 ish student starting off mm -hmm. um i'm not sure this is correct you took 30 credits in one semester oh maybe i did that wrong yeah, um, uh, that looks a little bit funky. We'll leave that for now. Um, okay, <laughs> I'm sorry. I must have put. I went back to, and it says like I didn't complete all my prereqs at one point too, and I did. Yeah, so I don't know fine. if some of the stuff. Yeah, the, the did. pre marking off prereqs is is that's just you. You have to make sure you get those correct. Um, mm -hmm. If we click on more detail, the thing that I like to come to is this. Um, uh, let's see, this class standing GPA, which is right here. So you can see 2.04, 2.82. So you were relatively flat those two semesters, uh, mm -hmm. those two years. Um, junior year, still not great. Senior year, still not great. So you, you were just basically a 3.0, kind of a 2.8 mm -hmm. student mm -hmm. all through undergrad. Mm -hmm. And then post back, you finally turned it around, yeah. which is good. What what happened? Like, what's the story behind that? Well, so I didn't actually go into school with pre-med intention. I kind of didn't really know what I wanted to do. Um, I always liked biology. So I kind of um, decided, oh, like, let me just explore that a bit. Um, it wasn't until... Uh, my biology, one of my biology TAs, um, she told me I should go and try like joining this pre-med, pre, -med, pre uh, co ed fraternity group. And they kind of encouraged me to do more like pre health things and expand it. But I wasn't, I still wasn't really sure. And like I kind of didn't really take a lot of prereqs, honestly, until sophomore year, maybe even later after, because at that moment I had only taken bio one and two and maybe gen chem one. But, um, what actually got me into medicine and what got me to want to change kind of my trajectory was um, during my winter break of my sophomore year, I had a friend who uh, passed away from an overdose, an overdose. Um, it, so that kind of just changed my whole perspective in medicine. And, and I was kind of more trying to find out answers about that. She, she was around my age. She was really young and I saw her very um, soon before it happened. So I just felt kind of like, confused and I wanted some answers and my school actually released a degree in neuroscience and that was like the same semester I kind of had to uh proclaim or you know choose a degree so I thought why not that sounds pretty interesting and it sounds like I could get a lot of my questions answered mm -hmm. so I decided to go forth with that and through that I was able to find 
kind of um, a love for uh, medicine and research also through that, I was able to do all these amazing classes where I could write like theses and explore um, different topics in medicine as well. Like one of my most favorite classes was psychopharmacology. And through that actually um, encouraged me to apply for the job I'm in now and working at the hospital I'm at now and um, seeing actually everything I had studied at that time, like in action and working with patients in clinical setting and in a clinical trial setting even. So that point in my life, as dark as it was, kind of encouraged me to go into this field. Um, I probably, you know, should have been also instead of focusing on piling on so much schoolwork was also focused on my mental health um, obviously that doesn't help my grades and it didn't help me in the long run but I think since then I've you know gotten a lot better I've taken classes at the uh, hospital slash school I work at now and because well, we get like money actually per year to take classes if we want it's really nice perk um, so I've taken a couple undergraduate level classes in the sciences to like just show an upward trend, but I was nervous that, you know, I obviously am not in a great place to apply to medical school probably for the next year or two, and I need to do some sort of post back or SMP. So I applied to a bunch of different programs and I'm attending one. In yeah. So I, I don't know if you actually answered my question. Like the, the question okay, was, sorry. <laughs> the, the question was what turned your grades around? And I, I guess what you're saying is you really just found something that you're passionate about. Is yeah, that, is that the answer? Also, yeah, and also I I I had um issues like I wasn't addressing like mentally and I also um got help in that aspect and okay. got supported better and um in other ways so I think that that kind of just helped me become more confident because okay. I think a lot of my issue too is just like my lack of confidence in some of these classes I'm I am a perfectionist. I know my grades probably don't show that, but um, like I, if I don't get something right the first time, it's very hard for me to like um, just accept defeat and move on. Like I'll probably nitpick at it. So I think I, you know, wasn't in the great place to support myself or feel confident. So when I wasn't doing as well, it was very hard to pick myself back up and yeah. it took a little bit. Okay. Got it. So you figured it out. So What's your question for me? Well, obviously, my grades are not great. Um, and I feel like I have made up with some of that with my experience because I have a lot of different experiences and hours. But I'm just afraid that even with like this SMP, like I don't know if it will, if I'm going to be in an OK standing to apply yeah. to med school. Got it. I'm just I just I don't have anyone in my family who's in med school, so I've been trying to get a bunch of information as yeah. much as I can. And your podcasts have been really helpful, so okay. I really want just to get some more advice yeah. from you. So, so I think one of the biggest, 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 biggest mistakes that students make on this journey is thinking that activities will make up for poor grades. Mm -hmm. They just don't. They don't. Medical schools have to make sure that you are academically capable to do well in med school so that they have confidence when they accept you that you're actually going to finish, yeah. right? It looks bad for them. It looks bad for you, right? <laughs> Tuition-wise, cost-wise, mm -hmm. to, to be accepted to a program and then fail out because you couldn't handle it, right? You could cure cancer and have a 2.0 GPA and not get into med school. Just, it's not going to happen. They have to make sure, first and foremost, that you are academically capable of doing well in med school, and by doing well, I mean that you're going to pass it. Ideally, within four years, you're going to you're going to start and you're going to graduate within the normal kind of four year timeline. So, medical schools won't care about your activities until you prove academic capability. Now, the question is, how do you prove academic capability, especially in someone uh, someone in your shoes where you struggled early and often, and have now finally started turning it around? And the answer to that question is nobody knows, right? Unfortunately, there's 200 plus medical schools in this country and every admissions committee will look at something different. Some will love the fact that you have 28 or 24 credits, whatever it is, at a 4.0 for your post back. Some will want more. They'll want 40 or 50 credits of undergraduate levels. Some will not be happy that you're going to do a graduate level SMP uh, coursework. And they would prefer if you stayed in undergraduate level coursework to show that academic capability. At the end of the day, you have to be okay with the fact that you're not gonna make every admissions committee happy. 
you are not going to prove academic capability to every single medical school. The only thing that you can do is prove in the best way that you can with the, the, the resources available to you that you are academically capable. And if that means doing an SMP because you can get graduate level loans to pay for your SMP versus doing more undergraduate level coursework where, where you typically aren't eligible for loans because you've already graduated school so the government doesn't want to pay for you to keep going to school, <laughs> that's typically the answer, right? It's like, yeah, it's the, it's that's the kind only of the situation way, I was in. <laughs> it's the only way I could pay, right? You're not the first person I've talked to that's been in this situation. And so ultimately, at the end of the day, the only thing that you can do, the only thing that you can control is your specific situation, your specific resources and limitations and responsibilities. And so if the only way for you to continue to show academic capability is by doing an SMP program because that's what you can get funded, then that's what you should do. And you should also be aware that there are going to be schools that won't like that you did an SMP and they'd rather you do more undergraduate work. And so ultimately, at the end of the day, your concern is not to invalidate you. It's, it's not a concern. Right, because the the concern is, it's legitimate, but it's mm -hmm. it's not for every medical school. So mm -hmm. you you have to be confident enough that you're going to do well in this SMP, and you have to be confident enough that there's going to be at least one medical school out there who's going to be okay with that and accept you. And you have to be okay with the fact that you're not going to please everyone. And there will be medical schools that will reject you because of your undergraduate GPA. Yeah, because that, that was my concern too, just about the screening and everything um, process. But yeah, similarly, I, I only was going to get pretty much funding and everything for graduate because I'm pretty sure the end, I tried filling out the form and it just wasn't, it just it wasn't applicable, you know, yep. for me. So yeah, the only thing that you can control is how well you do. That's the only thing in your control. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. And so that's the only thing I think you should focus on. Okay. It doesn't matter mm -hmm. about what the schools use for cutoffs and how they filter and this and that. You have no control over that. Zero yeah. control. I, I have a, a picture, I don't, I don't think I can grab it, a, a picture on my shelf back there that I love. And it's, it's a Venn diagram. And the, the Venn diagram, it's, it's obviously overlapping circles because that's what a Venn diagram is, is one circle is things that matter. And one circle is things that you can control. And the overlap is the things that you should focus on. Yeah. Unfortunately, most students focus on the things that matter that aren't in their control. Yeah. Yeah. This process does make you think too much in the future sometimes. <laughs> uh, yeah. And like, not, not, even, not even in the future. It's, it's trying to figure out what the game is, right? Trying to figure out what the rules to the game are when mm -hmm. the rules aren't published anywhere. Mm -hmm. They're just not yeah. published, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I, um, I tried to go to Reddit or external sources for it and I just found it's even <laughs> I know. I I actually just took the MCAT last week, um, and I was uh, with a I was seeing a tutor for it, and uh, he every time I mentioned it, he was on a missions committee for for a school, and he was like, "No, just I don't want to hear that word or that that sight out of your mouth ever again. Stay off. Stay off. <laughs> You're never gonna find yeah. anything good." Yeah. So here here's one piece of advice. Yeah, uh, you just took the MCAT. Are you planning on applying this cycle? No, okay. no, no, no. I'm good. not. I mean, even though I have been doing really well in my practice test and I felt pretty okay coming out of the MCAT. Um, I don't think it would make any sense, especially with my uh, grades. And then also if I do really well at the program, that would just kind of be shooting myself in the foot to exactly. apply without even having all these grades <laughs> the program on my- Chef's kiss. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One of the biggest mistakes that I see is students applying to medical school before 
they've even started their SMP or post back program or in the middle of yeah. their SMP or post back program. And what they're doing is they're basically saying, hey, medical schools, I'm applying to you right now, knowing that I need work on my grades, but trust me, I'm in a program and hopefully later I'll show you that, that I'm doing well. Schools just don't have time for that. So one of the biggest pieces of advice for everyone watching and listening right now is if you are doing a post back or an SMP, to finish your coursework before you apply to medical school, mm -hmm. right? Show that trend. Don't hope that they'll look at some updates later. Yeah, in this program, I don't even think they encourage that because Good. they have an agreement with a medical school and it just, they don't, it makes no sense to them because they are looking through like the following year applicants, yeah. not like the year coming in. So I don't even think I could if I <laughs> wanted to, but yeah. also I just think that would be a waste of money in my position. Good. Okay. Anything else? No, that was pretty much most of my concern. I mean, um, cause I think most of where my application is lacking at the moment, I don't know what I got on the MCAT. <laughs> Hopefully yeah. I did well enough that I don't need to take it again. Okay. But, um, I feel like my, uh, undergrad GPA definitely is, is holding me down, um, from yeah. applying at least, you know, this cycle. So okay. that was my concern mostly. Okay. Go out and crush the SMP. One, one quick question before we go. Did you use any blueprint resources to help you with the MCAT? I did use their, I think I got access to some of their free videos nice. in the beginning that I used. And I had a friend who recommended that I use some of their resources. So I did buy some of their um, full lengths um, to help. And I think they really helped when I switched like to the AMC Good. material. So they were a lot harder. So it kind of like prepped me to... I'm prepared for that. Good. So. good, good. All right. Well, good luck to you.